Well, welcome to another Down the Rabbit Hole video. We're doing a, believe it or not, a Star Frontiers video here. Um, even though where I am, alien planet though it may be, on my ship way over on the canyon there, this is a No Man's Sky environment. This is a No Man's Sky planet. That's a No Man's Sky ship. I know because I've racked up quite a few hours in No Man's Sky. I love that game. But it is actually a Star Frontiers video, and that's because No Man's Sky is very guilty of the topic that I want to ask for Star Frontiers uh, referees. How did you handle alien planets with regards to are they multi-biome or are they single biome? What I mean by that is, do your planets follow the Earth-like experience of there are snowy landscapes, there are deserts, there are jungles, there are swamps. Or, to couch it in reality, are your planets more like Mars? All desert, all sand and rock. Maybe some polarized caps, but we'll, as far as the vast majority of the landscape, is it one landscape type? Like you get in No Man's Sky. Like where we are right here, this is one of trillions of different worlds in No Man's Sky. But it doesn't matter if you're on the North Pole or the equator of any of those planets. They all look like this, wherever you go on this world. Sure, lots of different types of worlds. But each one is kind of cookie cutter no matter where you walk around or travel around on the planet itself. And Hollywood is really guilty of this. We have many examples from Star Wars, for example... Tatooine, I'm pretty sure, is a desert no matter where you go on that world. That's all we've ever seen of it. Varying degrees, sometimes sandy dunes like at the Sarlacc Pit, sometimes rocky terrain. But generally speaking, desert everywhere. Same with Hoth. And I should know because I've been there. It's just snow no matter where you go. In fact, the uh, images of it from space, it's all just one big white ice ball. So we assume... Hoth is varying degrees of glacial snow and nothing else. Um, I assume Endor is the same. That's also a case of it's just trees everywhere. Jungle, vast, lush jungle. And Star Wars, like, to also compare this to other shows like Star Trek, in its day, you pretty much had to paint with broad brushstrokes of like, okay, we're on an alien world, and for the sake of the scene that we are doing, it's a red rock planet, or it's a blue glowy planet, or whatever the heck it is. But it kind of stops there. Uh, I haven't seen, as a good comparison to modern day, I haven't seen the most recent Avatar film. Is it glow bluey jungle everywhere, or does it have deserts? Like, especially since the most recent one is all about water. Uh, but modern stories, modern films and sci-fi shows tend to like give you a little bit of variety on the theme, but we are generally talking one theme, one biome. And I want to know from the Star Frontiers crowd, what did you have? Because I had, I tried my best. There was actually a Dragon Magazine article. I can't remember which issue, but there was a guy who wrote an exact article about this. You talk about, you know, we, we all think in terms of, you know, Flash Gordon, Buck Rogers, whatever, for decades, it's always been the desert planet, the snow planet. A little bit like in video games, there's like the lava world and the ice world. You know, that's a, that's a trope that we easily connect with and we get it and we leave it there. But this guy was writing, you know, everything that we've ever seen for science fiction films up until recently. This is an old 80s magazine has been filmed on Earth. So you can say Earth has vast deserts like Tatooine, vast snowy landscapes like on Hoth, huge giant tree forests like on Endor. You've got all that here on Earth in real life. So surely those of you who are making science fiction campaigns must put some diversity, some range, some multi-biomes in your planets. Don't you? And I tried... I will actually give total props to TSR and Volturnus, the first adventure that's in Star Frontiers. 
it begins with your crash on a desert planet, but if you look at the map for Volturnus, and everybody knows I'm not exactly the biggest fan of the Volturnus story. I modified it myself, but I've taken a bit of heat from the crowds about, hey, I didn't like how Volturnus as a story module was set out, but I will do give props to the world. If you look on the map, sure, there's the lava fields and the radiated areas and well, not radiated, but like, you know, there's a lot of hostile environments on, on Volturnus, but there are also the Bachanda tree forests for the Kurabandai to hang out. There's the, there are on the map in the lower area, a lush vegetation area. There are oceans. There are temperate environments in Volturnus as well as the deserts, as well as the canyons. So thumbs up for, to TSR. They actually, on their very first module for Star Frontiers, they were telling us, hey, don't just stick with cookie cutter. This is the lava world. This is the ice world concept. This is a world that has its own variety, its own sort of stuff. And I want to know from the Star Frontiers crowd, were you like that? Did you manage to breathe a variety of landscapes into each world that you crafted? Or were you, like a lot of science fiction authors and creators, locked into the, it's one landscape type, and that's all you're going to go. And admittedly, hey, science backs you up, you know, Mars, Venus, Neptune, not, well, Neptune, yeah, I guess. Uh, a lot of the real planets actually just have kind of one landscape in the vast majority. So I, this is by no means a, a, a complaint about one's creativity, but it is... I thought it was an interesting psychological question or, you know, philosophical. How did you how did you manage the multi biome versus single biome trope? Which way did you go for myself? Um, there were now I've talked about quite a few of my lands or my planets, my campaigns already. Um, most recently, Outer Reach. Now, that was a in my in my version, that was a lava strewn volcanic planet. And I think because I, I tried my best to give it some variation, but it was kind of just black rock and spewing forth lava all the time. So it didn't really matter a heck of a lot. Also being outer reach versus inner reach, it was in a colder area of the sun's area uh, of Dramune's heat zone, life zone. So outer reach tended to be a little bit more colder, but the heat of the lava kept it sort of like, uh, I guess, like central heating for the, literally uh, for my world. And so therefore, Outer Reach, no matter where they went, it was kind of the same. And admittedly, we only went to two different, vastly different areas on Outer Reach with two different campaigns. I might, I might talk about the other campaign that went to Outer Reach sometime because that's that's a biggie. But anyway, that was Outer Reach. Um, when I did Inner Reach, I made it a tropical land, a tropical planet, but I did have different temperate zones. There were more deciduous forest type areas on that planet. And in fact, I can prove that to you, not that I have to. When I uh, talked about the Hungry Polecat, the spaceship that Grell Dakfin was the captain of and helped our characters uh, who were stuck on Outer Reach, Bubba and crew, he managed to get them off on the Hungry Polecat. In discussing where did that name come from, I mentioned, well, it's a riff on Millennium Falcon. It's a thing and a creature, so let's make it Hungry Polecat instead of Millennium Falcon. But I thought, what's the origin of that name? And I had sort of come up in my head with Reldakfin was stuck on the pole, the, the North Pole of Inner Reach at the time he was having an adventure. And there was a pole cat, a big saber-toothed tiger type of thing, circling around who killed the original crew he managed to get past this thing into the ship and take off and that was how he named it thank goodness thankfully for the hungry polecat i managed to get this ship ergo the name so he was in the north pole area it was arctic and snowy and there was a variety there was some there was a cold area on my tropical planet you know what i'm saying so like i i'd like to think that i tried my best now other planets that i also talked about Turlodrum was a moonscape, so it doesn't matter what kind of uh, biomes there were. There aren't any. Uh, I talked about Zicket. That didn't. That had an interesting landscape, but we didn't travel a lot on Zicket. That was sort of where we started 
and wanted to leave. So we didn't explore, is there a hot area on Zicket? Is there a North Pole frozen landscape in Zicket? I never really got there. Um, I have also talked about uh, Port Lorin on Gran Quivera, which is my giant city planet a la, you know, in Star Wars, you've got Coruscant, you know, we've been to the giant imperial city slash giant uh, galactic uh, central city. So with mine, I might do a video about this as well. My, I did the math for my Port Loren and I couldn't have the city cover the entire globe. Maybe I'll do a video about that. So I wanted that big Blade Runner world, but I had it confined to one area. The rest of the planet we did go to and we didn't really explore enough of it to verify if there were snowy areas versus hot areas, that type of thing. So Gran Quivera, Port Loren, that was self-contained mostly, with one exception. We did actually leave outside the city, but eh, not a good example. Um, the only other planet I can think of that I've gone into with any detail was Laco or Laco, I've heard it called from some of the Star Frontiers crowd. My windswept desert planet. Now, I did mostly go with uh, tumbleweeds and harsh tornado type sand blasted environment. Yes, kind of like a desert, but not so much the lack of water or too much heat, more the erosion factor. And so therefore, most of where we went was sand dunes and a few rocky outcrops, but there were oceans, there were rocky places. In fact, the last campaign session I ever did, we were in a cratered area that had trees and you know, living creatures, and it was very much um, a Earth-like environment with a temperate zone, if you will. So, I think for myself, I managed to do a variety of biomes, and I'd like to know if you guys did too. I wanted to end off with a prime example, one that really impressed me, and that is this movie, Star Chaser, The Legend of Orin, I've done a video talking about this. This is a proto Star Wars that came out after Star Wars. Great movie, by the way. It it you it takes a bit of um, putting yourself into like this is maybe B level kind of budget and acting and a little bit cheesy at times. But I love this movie. It is a great, great Star Wars tribute. Let's call it a tribute to Star Wars. Uh, what I really like about it, though, is in the film, our characters start off on a land that's very um, swampy, and we leave that planet, and then we go to another planet that has deserts and temperate forests and a variety. In fact, I was re-watching it recently just to see, you know, let me just do a little count here. There are only about three worlds that we actually visit in Star Chaser, and of those three, Three, we get half a dozen different life uh, biomes, different environments. The third planet we only briefly see, and it's only one. So, well done, Star Chaser, Legend of Orin. You managed to get half a dozen different types of biomes on three different worlds. That's impressive. Uh, at least I think so. It takes a bit of verifying with the plot. There might have been one jump to another planet that they maybe edited for time. But I'm going to say, officially, for what you see on film, we only go to three planets, one of which very briefly at the end. And in the home film, we see half a dozen different biomes, different landscape types. So, well done, Star Chaser, The Legend of Orin. I recommend it as a Star Frontiers referee. Check out that film. Yeah, it's very much Star Wars, but it stands up. I like it. Well, I'm going to stop there. So there is... A, Star a question for the Star Frontiers crowd. Your biomes on all of your different worlds. Which way did you go? Did you go multi-biome? Try to get as many different landscapes as possible on each of your worlds? Or were you more single biome? Like we have in the real life. Like Mars, like Venus, etc. And we'll see uh, what people have to say on that. So, until next time, we'll see you down the rabbit hole.